Okay, so let's modify the conservation of energy, which is the first law uh, to open systems. So what we could see here, we have to account for uh, the, so when we were talking about closed systems, the only way for heat and, sorry, for energy to get in and out is through heat and work. So we only accounted for Q and W in the closed system. It's still the same here, uh, meaning that heat and work will still uh, carry energy across the boundaries of the system. So we still have to put that in. But in addition to just energy leaving of its own volition through the boundaries of, this, of, the, of the control volume, we also have to account for the fact that mass will bring energy with it. And so the change in energy over time will necessarily be the addition of internal energy from the mass coming in, the addition of kinetic energy and potential energy from the mass coming in. And then we have to subtract uh, the same effects from the mass exiting because they will all, the mass that comes in and out will have um, both potential and kinetic energy embedded in it. So again, to remind you from the, the previous chapter, these are macroscopic kinetic and potential energy. This is microscopic kinetic and potential energy. That's the, the definition of U. So basically, uh, kinetic and potential energy of the molecules will change because, well, the molecules coming in and out. Uh, and the uh, also the kinetic energy of the macroscopic fluid uh, or, uh, that comes in and out will also change and that of the potential energy. So we count for it this way. And we sum, again, we sum this up because we may have more than one entering uh, mass flow rate and we have more than one uh, exiting flow rate. So we have to account for all of them. Uh, very, very often in many, many examples, you'll just have the one. So you have one here and one here. Uh, but sometimes that won't be the case. Uh, we have two or whatever. Uh, so this is kind of in totality. So uh, first glance of this thing, it looks it looks intimidating. But once you understand what's going on here, I think um, I think it's much easier to kind of grasp what's going on. Okay. So uh, so again, the mass coming in and its effects on the kinetic potential and internal energy. The mass coming out and its effects on of kinetic potential and internal energy. Uh, and in addition to that the stuff that we saw in the closed system, which is just the heat transfer in or out and the work transfer in, in and out. And that should give you the DDT of the energy, okay? Uh, yeah, so I circled here and read basically the closed system uh, we did in the closed system. Okay, so I wanna talk uh, briefly about work here because we will change this um, a tiny bit. So what you will see is that we won't actually use U, we will use this thing called H, which is enthalpy. And I wanna show you where it comes from. Um, and so this particular equation is correct. What we will do is work, from when we talked about the closed system, work includes, included stuff like the expansion contraction work, electric work, spring work, et cetera. Uh, we did not talk about this thing called flow work because we didn't have to deal with anything flowing in and out. There is, however, embedded in this flow work. And a flow work, we will take it out of this work term and combine it with U to create H. And let me show you what the H is, and hopefully uh, you'll understand the uh, physical meaning of enthalpy after this. Okay, so we discussed, again, work. And work of flow, it's any work that's associating with the fluid flowing, okay? So what we will do is imagine, and I have this kind of funky animation here, work of flow is by definition, the product of the pressure and the volume. Okay, so imagine I have this red liquid or whatever it is um, stuck there. And I want my green to go there instead of the red, okay? So what I need to do is first push the red out and then I need to expand the green into where the red was. So we can break this up into two processes. Uh, I get the first thing to push it out. So I have a pressure on the right and I have a pressure that's a little greater on the left. And the, the fact that I have a pressure gradient across this constant volume will push it to the right. Okay, so that, that takes care of that. That's my P, that's my VDP. That's this term right here, VDP. 
And so I'll, I'll have it kind of flow out. So it left. Okay. And now I want to expand to where the red was. So that uh, will be the pressure coming out, out of the left. It will, uh, it will push this green thing and it will change that with time, with volume to expand over there. Okay. So that's PDV, that's an expansion work. So those two together uh, will give me this thing called workflow. Okay. Um, and so uh, we can we can modify that expression from here from before, here this thing, by recognizing that the work of flow had PV in it. Okay. And I will define U plus PV. Uh, sorry, U plus PV to be the enthalpy. So the enthalpy, it's this thing uh, that changes the internal energy of my molecules because of this process of flow. And we just talked about this PDV, VDP. So you understand it's basically enthalpy accounts for the fact that I have to push something out of the way and expand into it. And so H is a much more intuitive thing to try to calculate here rather than U because H has to do with this movement of this fluid flowing across. Whereas U is a more stagnant type thing that we were using in the closed system. Can you use the previous term? Yes. And if you were to use the previous term, which we should, we will not in this class, but you could, it, it is still correct. This equation is valid. If you do that, then you have to account for here in the work, the flow work each and every single time. Uh, so instead of that, we just pull it out and uh, mush it together with a U and we get H. So our final type thing for the first law of open systems, instead of U, I put H here and work here. Um, it will be non-flow work, which I'll just omit. And then it will just be kind of known that that work does not include flow work in it. It's basically everything we did in the, in the, in the closed system scenario. So the W term here at this point just includes stuff like expansion, contraction, uh, electric work, spring work, et cetera. Um, and the flow work was taken out and it's, it's embedded here with the H. H is great. H um, is also tabulated. So we could see everything in the back of the book. H has also this U plus PV definition. So we could use uh, uh, equations of states to try to calculate that as well. Uh, and it has, uh, a, a very kind of intuitive intuitive um, explanation for different devices and processes, and we will see this happen. So people tend to use this enthalpy type thing to quantify flow work, okay? Now, if I were to try to simplify this first law for the open systems, if I only had one thing coming in and one thing coming out, that means that the mass flow rate has to be the same across. Uh, and then that would mean that uh, if it's a steady state, the Q minus W, um, sorry, that the D, E, D, T would uh, then become zero. I bring everything to the other side to get deltas and I get Q minus W is equal to M dot times the change in enthalpy, change in G dot, the change in uh, height and the change in the kinetic energy through the velocities. Okay, so that's, that's one particular way of looking at it. We will use this simplified equation a lot uh, we will also, um, it's, if we're talking about mixers, I think we have several uh, M dots, we, will, we, we can still use this idea, we will just have to account for the fact that um, some streams will have different M dots. Uh, which, so it's, it's a, uh, a tad uh, of a complication to this um, equation, but you can easily derive it from, from here, okay? Uh, you will also notice that when I'm using this equation, and I'm gonna show you in the next slide, uh, as far as the units are concerned, we have to account for something that's a little bit strange if you look at it. So if I were to divide the whole thing by M dot, I would get um, heat per unit mass and work per unit mass. So if it's SI, for example, if I divide through the, by M dot, this will be like joules per kilogram, okay? So that's fine. So this, both of these will be joule per kilogram. But what you should see here, delta H will be joule per kilogram. These things, are not in joules per kilogram. This is um, like, an, if it's SI, this is meters per second. So it'd be meters per second squared. How is that related to joules per kilogram? Um, and this is the same thing. This is meters per second squared times meters. It'd be meters squared per second squared. How is that related? So I wanna kind of show you that because you will use this. So again, Ke is 
specific kinetic energy is velocity squared over two. So for SI, it's meters squared over uh, square, second squared. And for USCS, it's foot squared per second squared. Potential energy, same thing, GZ. G is uh, uh, acceleration and Z is just a distance. If you multiply them together, you get the same units. So what you should know is if you use the SI system and you make sure that everything is in the SI units, not kilojoules, but joules, uh, you will get a complete identity. One joule per kilogram is identical to one meters per second, uh, one meter square per second squared. Uh, and I, I could prove that to you um, by basically taking a pressure and divided by area. You could see that that would look like that. So if you want to see that, go ahead and do it. Uh, in the customary system, in the imperial system, uh, it, we often want something like in BTU per pound mass. And so you could see basically how to convert from one BTU per pound mass to, to foot per second, foot square per second squared. Um, it's the 25,000 uh, uh, unit conversion. I will show you these in examples um, as well, in, in following examples.